Let's talk about fortified wines. So the sensory analysis of the fortified wines is typically following a similar protocol to those of yeah, other still wines, white wine, red wine, but also sparkling wine. There are just some specific aspects or point to consider due to their unique style and production process. So key elements to consider when performing a sensory analysis for those fortified wines are, first of all, the appearance. Um, in addition to the usual observation of color and clarity, uh, sediments that may have formed should be observed. So fortified wines, due to the fact that they have such a high alcohol content, are usually quite stable. On the other hand, they usually require a certain aging, aging in barrel. And while you also consider a sherry, which has also a specific way how it is aging, you definitely have characteristics to focus on. Um, and furthermore, it's the, the aroma, which is maybe a bit different to what we usually see in, in white or red wines. So the wines have characteristics of often nutty or raisin aromas, as well as hints of spices such as cinnamon or cloves. Some wines may also have notes of chocolate, coffee, tea or tobacco. So let's go on. Then it's also the, the flavor that is typically sweet. So besides the fact that ethanol brings a certain sweetness sensation at that high levels, usual ports, for example, have residual sugar of 80 gram per liter. So they are kind of sweet. Um, the alcohol level for fortified wines is yeah, usually categorized in those three uh, ways, low alcohol content would be something between 15 to 16.4, from 16.5 on to 18.4, it's seen as medium and everything higher than 18.5% volume is seen as a high alcohol content. And that's definitely also making a, a difference here, sensory wise. The mouthfeel, uh, the texture can be quite distinctive with usually being quite full-bodied, sometimes a slimy mouthfeel. The weight of the, of the wine needs to be evaluated also along with any astringency from the tannins. But it's usually mainly the alcohol and the sugar that's making it perceived as a very yeah, rich, full wine here. The finish means that the length of the finish and any lingering aftertaste should be included. The finish of a fortified wine is usually very long compared to, to ordinary wines, with also flavors that continue to evolve after the wine has been swallowed due to the fact of the high alcohol here. And it's then also the aging. These wines can be aged for many years, even decades, and the sensory characteristics can change significantly over the time. So while evaluating an aged fortified wines, you should also consider the development of secondary and tertiary aroma, such as that nutty uh, characteristics or oxidized notes, as well as changes in color, uh, like more browning and in general, the texture is changing as well. But how to achieve those specific wines? So the fortification, means that you are adding ethanol and bit depending on the region, bit depending on the different yeah, producers, it can vary a bit. So the choice of the spirit impacts the quality, the price and the characteristics of the um, fortified wine. So it can be like really neutral spirits that you're taking at 96%. Um, or being significantly lower at 77%, for example, like you have for many ports. And it's playing here also in terms of the spirit characteristics, a role on the, on the later product. The aroma of the spirit is related to different groups of chemical compounds like higher alcohols, if they are very rich, um, they are cluish. If they are not too high, they 
get a certain fruity characteristics. The same with esters and aldehydes. The aldehyde content present in the spirit coming from wine depends not only on the original wine quality, also on the distillation process. So how carefully you select out the pre-run fraction and the after-run fraction so that you just take the, the, the best part of the spirit running out of the distillation column. Apart from Benz aldehyde, which is a pleasant aroma of bitter almond, the aldehydes uh, usually in spirits have an unpleasant aroma like green leaves, bitterness, green fruits, and that will then later on uh, contribute negatively to the port or to the other fortified wines. Um, the alcohol should be evaluated in general terms. If the wine has a sufficient concentration of flavors, weak or diluted, um, and is generally balanced, but the alcohol can also bring a certain heat, warm effects, and yeah that's due to the high alcohol content and yeah try to pay also certain attention to sensations you might think or they come from the alcohol content in the fortified wine what are the ideal tasting conditions for those fortified wines so the temperature are slightly higher compared to sparkling wine so 10 to 13 degrees celsius usually you have a standardized smaller tasting class for those wines. Usually you fill them with 35 milliliter of wine and it needs a certain experience to properly evaluate those fortified wines. So you should have a keen sense on the smell and the taste and also understand the different kinds of fortified wines and the unique characteristics of them. And then, yeah, like in the previous example, it is important to follow a consistent protocol and use a kind of standardized vocabulary 